What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this video is all about the recent, as of last night, Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. I want to go through a brief of what it is and more importantly, how it will impact the future of Tesla's battery technology. So let's first start off with the process so we all can get a better understanding of what that battery cell process looks like from raw materials to the final end product, a vehicle. This was the process flow that Tesla shared when they announced their Gigafactory, and I think it provides a very nice visual representation of what it looks like from raw materials to final end products. So you can see over on the left, you have raw materials, and then it goes through the manufacturing of the cell process, and at the moment, Panasonic is the one that is taking care of this process of manufacturing the cathodes, the anodes, the separators, the electrodes, and then they wind that all up, they introduce a, an electrolyte, they put it into the cell assembly, they can and cap it, and then it gets put into blocks or what Tesla calls modules, and it's a bunch of cells put together in a block, and then that, those blocks, multiple blocks, make up an entire pack. Once that pack is fully assembled, then it can be introduced into the bottom of the car. Now, why was Tesla interested in Maxwell Technologies? Well, there's a few theories. They have been for many decades producing a super capacitor for a whole bunch of different uh, use cases. One of them is this stop start technology that you sometimes hear with the car next to you as they're at a stoplight. The, uh, the car is using the energy from these super capacitors to power some of those main things while the engine shuts off. The moment that the person steps on the uh, accelerator or gas pedal, that, that uh, supercapacitor is used to start back up again the engine and thus saving some energy and some fuel on vehicles. There are some other use cases for supercapacitors, and supercapacitors have been around for quite a while. This has been Maxwell Technologies' mainstay and bread and butter, but what they started doing in, I think, the early 2000s is doing some research taking the technology that they have have built up in these supercapacitors called dry battery electrode tech and experimenting with putting them into lithium ion battery cells. And this past January, we got a really good picture of what they're doing with this research. They've been working with some automakers. They, about a year ago, hinted at a huge partnership and partnerships. And then about four or five months ago, they really started, started pounding the pavement with this potential huge uh, partnership with a automaker. And now we know that that was most likely Tesla that they were working with. My guess is, is that the Roadster and the semi-truck were Tesla's sort of prototypes to test out Maxwell Technologies tech, and they liked it enough to make a bid to acquire it. Now, what makes these dry battery electrode cells so special? Let's get into that, and I think this is probably the, the central part of why Tesla wanted to buy Maxwell Technologies. I think the super caps are, are really interesting, but, but in terms of implementation of super caps in Tesla's current products, I, I don't see them implementing them immediately aside from stationary energy storage like the, uh, the, 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 the power walls and the power packs. But let's focus on the dry battery electrodes for lithium ion battery cells because I think that that's where we'll see the fastest implementation of Maxwell Technologies technologies tech. So let's first talk about the difference between the wet electrode process and the dry battery electrode processor technology that Maxwell has. So in the wet electrode process, a slurry of the active material like cathodes of nickel, cobalt, aluminum, or nickel, magnesium, cobalt, plus the binder, plus the conductive additive is prepared and deposited on the current collector, and this is dry baked to remove the solvent. This process is quite intensive. It takes up a lot of manufacturing space on the manufacturing floor, and it's also time intensive. Now compare this to the DBE technology. You have the active material, you have the binder, 
Plus you have the additive that is mixed in a dry state, which is the proprietary tech that Maxwell has, and then laminated onto the current collectors. So the first impact that we'll likely see with this acquisition is a 16X production density increase. This basically means that they can produce more battery cells in the same footprint that they were producing the older style technology wet electrode cells. This is the first impact that I think Maxwell Tech will benefit Tesla on. The second thing is a 10 to 20% cost reduction. So you're reducing the cost of the battery cells and therefore reducing the cost of the entire car and increasing the profit margin for Tesla. This is something that they've been working on for a long time and I think that this is a pathway to be able to further reduce cost and get the price of vehicles even lower and of course increase profit margins for the company. The other thing that Maxwell stated in a recent presentation was that the energy density is a significant increase. In fact, it's well known in the industry that Tesla has around a 250 to 260 watt hours per kilogram energy density. What Maxwell Tech is saying is that they have right now today a 300 watt hour per kilogram energy density in their tech right now with a pathway to get to 500 watt hours per kilogram. And what this means for the end user is that it's going to equate to more range. So we recently saw that Tesla made an update in range by simply improving primarily the front motor in the Model S and X. This means that it's going to take the range from Model S 370 miles to something over 400 easily right now. And for Model X, it's gonna inch it closer to that 400 mile range. But it does appear that the theoretical potential that Maxwell Tech's DBE has will eventually push Tesla's range of their vehicles past 500 miles on a single charge. This has been one of the knocks against electric vehicles that when you compare how far a gasoline car can go versus how far an electric car can go, it just hasn't matched up pound for pound yet. In fact, with my Model S that goes 245 miles on a single charge, 75 kilowatt hour battery pack, when I compare that to a similar luxury car like an Audi or Mercedes, they're easily going over 400 miles on a single tank of gas. So there's quite a disparity there. And this is, again, one of the reasons why I think that Tesla's interested in the DBE tech. It's going to get that more at parity with gasoline engines and therefore adding to the already convincing list of reasons why people should and want to adopt electric vehicles. The next benefit to Maxwell's DBE tech is what they claim is a 2x increase in battery life with this DBE technology. This is in line, I think, with something that Elon Musk recently said about future battery tech of Tesla's being able to hit 1 million miles of life. My guess is, just putting the pieces together and reading it between the lines, that he's thinking that Maxwell Tech is the way to get to that million mile battery pack. And the last reason why I think Tesla acquired Maxwell Tech is, I think that it gives Tesla a better opportunity to, if they want to sometime in the future, to go fully vertical with cell production. As we all know, Tesla has been tied at the hip with Panasonic since 2009, producing these battery cells, leveraging Panasonic's resources and technology. If Tesla wanted to, I think that they could potentially part ways with Panasonic and go fully vertical with cell production, bringing it entirely in-house. They've got the facility with the Gigafactory or Gigafactories, and all they need is to scale out that human resources and, and technology. And I think that Maxwell could potentially be the pathway to do that sometime in the future and therefore owning more of that cradle to grave or production cycle 
Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I've been giving this a thought. I know if, if you've watched my previous video, I sort of touched on this at the end of the video. The more that I think about this, the more that, that I like it. It would not surprise me one bit. In fact, Tesla has this habit of bringing things in-house when they think that they can do it better than their partners. And uh, uh, some good examples of this are when, when uh, Tesla and Mobileye parted ways with their uh, Hardware One self-driving. They decided to pull that in-house and create what we now know as full self-driving and, and full autonomy. They've now done this with their autonomous chip, and we saw that at length and in detail in their uh, during their investor autonomous day that they held last month. And they've also done, done this with some smaller things like seats. They now, I think, are the only manufacturer, auto manufacturer that is producing their own seats. They have their own little production facility in the Fremont area. And um, being that, that cells, battery cells, are a fundamental part of uh, an electric vehicle and a fundamental part of the cost and profit margin of an electric vehicle, it would not surprise me one bit if Tesla decides to pull that in-house and go fully integrated. That, that I think, is more long-term. I think short-term cost reduction and range increase are some of the immediate benefits that Tesla will see with this acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. What are your your thoughts? Does this excite you? Do you see some prospect in this acquisition? I'd love to hear in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Big shout out to Patreon supporters. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, hit the like button and please share this video out because I think it's a really nice overview of why Tesla decided to acquire Maxwell Tech. See you guys in the next video.